Christ. Let's begin our news review with a picture of three European leaders on an Italian aircraft carrier. Here they are, left to right, Renzi, Merkel and Hollande. They're on the front page of the Daily Telegraph, pledging to deepen defence cooperation after the UK decided to leave the European Union. The paper says this is the clearest sign yet that Brussels will accelerate its plans for an EU army. The Times looks at uh, senior members of the UK's ruling Conservative Party reacting in anger after Sweden, Sweden warned Prime Minister Theresa May aggressive cuts to corporation tax would make Brexit negotiations more difficult. In the same paper, the former French president Nicolas Sarkozy has launched his campaign for re-election next year. He says he's the best equipped to lead France in a troubled time, he says. The Wall Street Journal looks at the deal. We've been talking about Pfizer unveiling its biggest takeover of a company producing cancer drugs in its 167-year history. The pharmaceutical giant plans to, to pay $14 billion for medivation. In the FT, swimwear maker Speedo has stripped the US Olympic swimmer Ryan Lochte of his sponsorship following the controversy the gold medalist sparked after he lied to Brazilian police about what well, he said he was robbed at gunpoint. He wasn't. And finally, she has in the past entertained the world with her diva-like behaviour and now, according to Gulf News, the singer and actress Barbara Streisand has called the chief executive of Apple, that's Tim Cook, to complain. She's not happy about Siri. Apple's virtual assistant on the iPhone, iPhone pronounces her name incorrectly. She says the second S in Streisand and not a soft Z. Streisand. Yes, I must say, I've been mispronouncing her name all the time. Cornelia Meyer is CEO of the MRL Corporation, a business consultancy. She likes Good your work morning, morning, Cornelia. so much. I was in the green room recommending films to Cornelia. She said, be quiet, I need to watch World Business Report. <laughs> I'm like, come on! Just, We're talking um, cinema here! I'm sure Siri gets your name right, I assume. <laughs> I'm she? sure they don't know my you name. You don't know. Uh, I'm sure they don't know <laughs> my name, and, and that's quite fine. And my name gets mispronounced, and I'm, I'm fine. As long as they don't call me Daisy Duck. <laughs> <laughs> Mine gets mispronounced all the time as well. Let's look at the reservoir dogs here. They look like reservoir dogs walking on this aircraft carrier. No, no. They're shaping the future of Europe. And what do they want? Well, they, it was interesting. I don't think they all want the same thing. They displayed unity and they said we need integration. And, but you might have seen that Merkel says Hollande was work, well, edging towards the ever closer unity. And Merkel sort of twisted this to... Um, oh, it's about defense. On defense, on security, we need more cooperation. Because within, more, within Germany, you saw Schäuble, her finance minister, clever man, who said um, when we had the Brexit vote, he said, I do hope that people do understand if Brexit uh, doesn't happen or if it happens, we must stop the ever closer integration or we will lose you know, a lot of the people within Europe. So this is sort of the German message, it's, it's, a, it's a better Europe, it's not more Europe. They've kind yes. of changed their stance, yes. haven't they? There's an official EU summit in September. This was kind of their getting their ducks in a row, wasn't yeah. it? Prior yeah. to that, yes, yeah. especially the French, especially the three big nations, the three big nations, and especially the French are more sort of on the Juncker line of ever closer integration. It's quite so interesting, it's interesting though, because Matteo Renzi is, is facing a referendum yeah. in Italy at the end of this year about co really important constitutional change in Italy, and he said, "If I don't win the referendum, I will." resign so for him for this to be him to be hosting this for him to be seen with these two leaders to be right in the center of the eu negotiations it's important for him at home isn't it politically it, it, exactly it's very important and he may resign but he may be right reappointed again because it's then up to the president to reappoint so 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 it may be a resignation a italiana <laughs> Go on then, go for this next All one. All right. Yeah. Well, this is interesting, actually. What do you make of this intervention, you could argue, by the Swedish Prime Minister saying, warning Britain, you, you mustn't cut your corporation tax too significantly. That, that will make your negotiations out of Europe even more difficult. Two, two interesting th threat, as it were. Two things, two things. You know, your story on the corporation tax in the US, there's clearly a corporation tax war going on or, or at the start. That's the, the macro thing. On the micro, as last time I checked, 
we in the United Kingdom were a sovereign nation and could still <laughs> set our own tax rates. So, so it's, it's, it's an interesting threat, but we are sovereign and it's not helpful because this the, the Brexit negotiation is not going to be easy. And, and these, this sort of posturing is, is really not, well, not very helpful. Will Theresa May take any notice, or Philip Hammond, the, the finance well, minister Well, I think Chancellor. Hammond will probably tell him to go and do whatever he wants to do in <laughs> Sweden, but out of what we are doing here. Nicolas we'll Sarkozy see. wants to be president again. And, uh, well, let's say that Francois Hollande and his party are extremely unpopular, which already gives Mr Sarkozy an advantage if he wins the nomination. If he wins the nomination, but he's still trailing Alain Juppé. And yes. I wouldn't discard Alain Juppé because, you know, Sarkozy was seen as a bit flash, a bit, a bit, a bit too unfriendly. Controversial, no doubt about yeah, it. Yeah, but too bit unfriendly. And Juppé had been prime minister. Juppé had been, had, is, is, is a mayor of Bordeaux. So he, is, he, is, he, is, he still has a little bit of... A fight to go um, t in order to make the nomination. But it's, it's interesting. Hollande has three um, fellow socialists that are running. So, so, uh, so everybody is going to be, they're going to be very busy amongst themselves before they head off against each other. Yes, yeah, there are, there are legal issues around uh, Nicolas Sarkozy's potential candidacy because he could end up in court before it all begins. But, you know, the French judicial system is fairly slow. That could work to his advantage. Now, the Wall Street Journal looks at Pfizer acquiring this key uh, cancer drug. And, and you were keen to talk about this. I mean, the, bi the biggest maker of cancer drugs in the world is, is Roche, the uh, Swiss yeah, company. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would imagine they knew a, a lot about Medivation, perhaps thought about acquiring it themselves. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? it it's interesting because what I think is interesting here is what your previous um, uh, guest had indicated is, you know, the, the, the tax deals didn't work. And I think now, and I never liked... That's the, Pfizer trying to buy Allegan exactly. in Ireland. Yeah. And but the, I never liked those deals. I think these sort of deals make a lot of sense because they're shoring up that Pfizer has a bad pipeline, has, has not as good a pipeline as, let's say, Novartis or, or Roche. Or AstraZeneca. So, uh, AstraZeneca. So what they're doing now is they're doing the clever thing. They're buying in know-how. They're shoring up the, 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 the pipeline, the product pipeline. And th that's a very clever thing. And I think from that sense, is there has been there's some reason gotten back into there will be a lot of M&A activity of this sort, especially because of the accounting rules. Don't forget, you can capitalize research at acquisition. So this is exactly the sort of deal that works from an accounting standpoint and from a from a, from a knowledge standpoint. And the fact that it's a smart deal was proved by the fact that Pfizer shares didn't really wobble too much no. after this announcement, no. even though it's spending a lot of money for that company. Yeah. In the past year and a half, two years or so, we've often talked about uh, athletes who have misbehaved in some way or another and therefore <laughs> lost sponsorship deals. This Ryan Lochte story from Rio was one of the top stories of the entire Olympic Games and it didn't even involve him competing. And he's now lost his four major sponsors, Speedo and Ralph Lauren being the two big ones. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, um, and, but I think this is a good thing. You shouldn't lie. And as an athlete, as an Olympic athlete especially, you're also seen as a role model, as a role model for young people. It's the same thing, you know, we, you, you don't want doping, you know, you don't want doping because that's, that's, it's not, it's not cricket. It's not fair, 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 fair to do so. And, and sort of lying to the police um, after having been misbehaving after drunken behavior um, is not a good thing. And, uh, and the sponsors were, I think, justified in doing what they did. Yeah, let's see. I mean, uh, he, gave, he, gave, he gave Rio a bad name for uh, the time that people believed him. And then when it was revealed that he was lying, he received the opprobrium of an entire nation, 200 million people shouting liar at their TV screens and into his face. Incredible. It was incredible, and it, it's just, it, it's, these, you are a role model once you're an Olympic athlete, so it would be maybe a good idea to behave like one. Yeah. Now, this story is really <laughs> funny. You've got Barbara Streisand on the phone. You're the CEO of the biggest <laughs> company by, by market capitalization in the world, and you've got Streisand but, on the blower. But, you know, names are a funny thing. I mean, I don't, I'm not defending that, but names are a funny thing. That's why when you ask a politician, the first thing they say to you is, you must recognize names and faces because people get funny. They get offended when I you mispronounce them. I what his reaction them. was, though. I'd like to know what his reaction was and what? whether Siri can be changed. 
I'm can sure she be Siri modified can. for I'm Barbara? Sure. I'm sure she can be okay. modified for Barbara. Okay, so how do we say her name? It's Zand, isn't it? <laughs> Barbara Streisand. As opposed to Dry Streisand. But I've always said Barbara Streisand. I never even knew it was Streisand or Streisand. Has she, she given you yeah. a call as well? Nah, no, 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 no. She's no, not no. phoning you up. You know, apparently it can cost a few hundred pounds to I'm, see her perform. I'm She's too, that, that big I'm and too, a star. I'm too intimidated to pronounce her name now. <laughs> we always have to get yeah, names right. Yeah, rightly so. Rightly so. <laughs> yeah. Cornelia, thank you very much indeed. Always a great pleasure to see you. Thanks for giving us your time this Thanks. morning. Have a good rest of the week. Thank you too for your company. Have a really good day. We'll see you soon. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.